And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, formerly of Co of Core RPG and Star and Starguard, and the head honcho of GMD Online. Now coming to us with the with a revamp in the form of the Pegasus engine, as well as the a the adversaries, allies, and encounters guide, or AAE for those who aren't paid by the syllable. The one and only Martin Harper. How are you doing today, man? Or tonight, in your case? Yeah, it's early evening here. I'm doing well, thank you very much, mm -hmm. Mildred, for uh, inviting me back. It's thank good to for, be back in the temple. Yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming back. Um, so, I, I suppose the the big thing that I should I should nail down it with this is. The nature of the of the Pegasus engine is it a full on second edition, or is it more, or is it more of a refinement of core? That is a very good question. Um, it is more of a refinement of core. Mm -hmm. That said, um, the the changes in it are somewhat significant compared to core. Yeah. Especially with the uh, character generation, etc., and no doubt you're going to have some deeper questions about the inner workings later. Mm -hmm. But the what makes it more of a, a extra addition is the fact of these the, the character creation and the powers. There, there's two major changes in the system to just really refine it. That said, mm -hmm. if you've got the core RPG and you don't want the Pegasus engine because you already own the core RPG, all Pegasus engine material will work with core seamlessly. Mm -hmm. And that that brings me to, an, to another thing that I often ask whenever I'm dealing with an addition change. Do you plan on putting out a conversion guide to smooth over the process? Absolutely. The um, well, to start with, at GMD Online, we don't want to have our vision is not to have multiple versions. Mm -hmm. The primary reason we are going for the version is mainly marketing. We made a very big error at the beginning of creating a game called GMD Core RPG. Um, the a lot we are mainly driven by our members, so it was a, a big choice by the members. And it wasn't an incorrect one because the alternate name wasn't really good. Mm -hmm. However, since then, it's been about three years since the core RPG. We've been playing hundreds of games online and we decided, you know what, it does need a proper name. It does need something to define it from all the core games that are out there so that was its defining reason of having a new edition mm -hmm. that said anybody who owns core rpg in the pdf uh via membership on one either our patreons or our vip membership directly on our website or is a past um backer on kickstarter the pdfs are automatically going to be updated so you just re-download and you've got the Pegasus engine. That said, to answer your question, yes, I'm going to put a comparison sheet out and say these are the rules that have been changed because not everything is going to be changed. We are just going to literally pick up the book and put it into this new design and go through and go, right, this chunk's not needed anymore. This chunk is needed. This needs to be reworded. We need to explain this better. And that's what we're doing. Now, with that in mind, I'd like I I know I have the habit of doing the whole humble beginnings thing, which obviously doesn't apply because we already covered that. But yeah. what I'd like to what I'd like to cover instead is in the amount of time that you've done playtesting, what were what were some of the things that you felt that you felt should be you felt should have been improved on or needed a rework that you wanted to address with Pegasus. 
there is a few things. Um, there was a, a rule th- um, in the core RPG that needed to be removed. It was a natural progression and degression of your character sheet. We never used it. And when we were designing it, we put it here, we said, oh, this is a really cool function. And we used it during the play tests then. But since then, it slowly pitted out and we sort of overlooked it. And it, in the end, I said, well, this has got to go because it's just taking up space in a book where something else can go in instead. Also, in the core RPG, there was missing some very important rules. So delirium. Delirium was missing. And it was a complete oversight. I just looked. Even our editors were looking through it. And we went, and it was just, um, I think one of the backers was, was playing a game and said, oh, how do we get our delirium back? We said, oh, it's on this page with your health recovery. And we looked into it and went, where's delirium? Mm-hmm. So something, it probably I'm going to hold my hands up since I do all the uh, layout design. It was probably my fault that that was missing. It was probably just a text box. It overflowed and didn't flow into the following text box. Yeah. My mistake. So I wanted to fix that. We um, fixed it by putting it into our Oracle magazine and our updated PDFs on the site. But that, that doesn't help people. So I... and. We put it into a back of a PDF as well. So it was there. But what I want is it to be in its correct place. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was missing. And the major one is powers. Now, powers works great in core anyway. But we've got, uh, well, one, two, three. We've got four worlds coming, which are superpower worlds. Mm-hmm. So we've got like a fantasy one, a sci-fi one, and two modern uh, sort of campaign settings and so we've been playing a lot of powers and one of the games we were looking at it and there was in core you have to have a high focus to get lots of energy and then your super power element gives you a bigger boost depending on the uh, type of super game you're playing street mm-hmm. cosmic full color that sort of thing yeah. and it just We thought, why should strong characters have a high focus? So what we've done is we've just had the change in how you get your powers. The the powers work exactly the same, etc. But it's just a little bit of a change there, but it is major. Mm -hmm. And it did did cry out for a new book. Yeah. Now, with 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 that kind of thing in mind... Oh... I am cur- I am curious of all the of all the names to go with this re- with this rebrand of core. What what made you go with Pegasus? Well, a Pegasus. I am a massive uh, mythological um, fan, and if you look at the artwork that goes behind our major fantasy one called Law L O R, doesn't stand for anything. It's just the world's name is Law. Mm-hmm. The it's got that it's an ancient fantasy, so it's not the medieval fantasy. It's ancient, so it's like the ancient Greece and things like that. There are no Greek gods and nothing like that. It's just the look, you know, the, the, the little sort of uh, skin it's using. Just go, just going for Bronze Age. Absolutely. It's a Bronze Age feel. Mm-hmm. And with the Pegasus engine, Pegasus is a beast that helps cre- heroes reach new heights. So it was that with its wings. It's a new engine because, you know, horsepower, that sort of thing, uh, that reaches your hero to become the hero you want to be, climb onto the Pegasus engine, it's going to take you to new heights to become that hero. So a little bit of thought behind it, a bit, you know, yeah. tongue-in-cheek. Which, hey, at the, at, the very, at the very least, um, nobody's going to confuse you with TriStar. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, taking the, now taking that in, taking that into account, the other thing that I found kind of interesting, which I don't recall this being a thing with the with um, core originally, and if it is, feel free to correct me, is the introduction of a box set. Yes, core it was just a um, soft bat book and a hard bat book. Mm-hmm. Whereas Pegasus Engine, we had this idea. That and the the reason behind it is our own company 
uh, dynamics has changed as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got, like GMD is a family of little companies and we're, we're a family. We're a very, very small business. There's two or three of us here doing it. Mm -hmm. And I've when we moved, because two years ago, all our printed products got outpriced. And I don't want my products to be too expensive mm -hmm. because we're, we're competing in a world dominated by mainstream role-playing games. So if my product is at the same price as them, I, I'm just not going to get a look in. And I want people to play my games. Mm -hmm. However, we all like a nice book on the shelf. And my, uh, I don't know if you have seen my books and that. They are beautifully illustrated. Mm -hmm. So I want to maintain that quality. And over the past few years, my artwork's got better. So the we now own our own printing presses. Mm -hmm. And we, we, you know, we moved home. We, so we into a bigger premises. So part of our new plot, we we've got a, where, a studio printing presses, finishing equipment. We, we, we do the whole lot. So we make mm -hmm. tokens, cards, everything. We've got all the machines and everything to do it. So that brought down the, the production costs, naturally. So I wanted to, instead of going, well, we're going to maintain that price, we reduced all the prices of our products mm -hmm. and to therefore give that back to our supporters because we're here for people to play our games, not here to make mountains of money. Mm -hmm. and part of that was, do you know what would be cool, is if we had a box set, because we, when we were playing the game, everybody was around the table, and we would have a big softback book each, and they're all flicking through, which is cool, you know. But not everybody is in that position to buy, you know, £25 softback, because mm -hmm. financially... And if you're the games master, you tend to buy the book, don't you? And then you pass your book around to players. I mean, you've got six people around that table all creating characters at the same time. But they might be, like the wizard might be into the powers section. Somebody else is looking for the gear. We decided, why don't we split the player guide down into separate books? So when the games master is creating those characters he can go right there we are there's your roles you can look for the roles you're, you're looking through races here you're looking through the powers or the players can buy those separate books for their characters as well so if i was being the wizard i could get a uh, power book to look up my powers as on the fly and the you know so you two or three players are not waiting for a book it just gave that option so we decided to split it all down and to keep it all nice, we put it in a box. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's build a box. So as you come along as a GM, you might just want to buy the set. Fine. Mm -hmm. Or you might buy one or two extra books where you're, you want to uh, have the character gen quicker. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and then obviously we're going to have a hardback book, which is all the books in one. So as you go through it, they'll have another cover, then another cover. And, the other thing, the other thing that I that that comes to mind with that with that kind of mindset is the is the fact that I had noticed I had noticed a few months back maybe maybe this happened maybe this happened further back and I just didn't notice at the time but you were starting to put in a kind of index like version a kind of index or a wiki like version of a lot of the rules on your site. Is yes. that also to help facilitate so it's not one book getting passed around? Yes, um, that is part of my patron. I've got two different membership systems mm -hmm. that fund what we do. So we've got uh, the VIP members. They fund future products. So every month, they, depending on the tier support, they will send a form in saying, I want this product created because that's what I'm interested in. On Discord, I go live, they come in, and that's what we develop. Mm -hmm. patrons uh which we're also going to include with a multiple like a community vote but the main thing about patron is putting all my rules onto the website for free mm -hmm. and everything i do eventually will be free but it's years down the line compared to the books and that now because of the time it takes and Depending on the level I get supported in Patreon, it fluctuates depending on people's circumstances. Mm -hmm. I then spend each month 
copying and pasting, making it look a bit prettier. Mm -hmm. But it's the core RPG that's going on. Once uh, Pegasus is completed, I then go back and I'll update that free rules to be Pegasus. So everything coincides. Mm -hmm. But at, until Pegasus is out at the public, um, everything's core related at the moment. So, yes, um, having it online is just, it helps players. You know, you can play through your tablet. But it's a long way away to, from being completed. Mm -hmm. Now, this uh, this provides us a good opportunity to re to reintroduce a lot of a lot of the motifs within core because since given how long that given how long that was I think um I think a refresher is is in order so yeah with the, now you have you have the now the players books is split into five character creation specialization perks powers and gear um i realize that it's difficult to give a page count for each of them because some are going to have more detail than others but what would you estimate the what would you estimate the page count for each of those each of those guides is well if you look in the core book there it's roughly the amount of pages that are between the really thin books mm -hmm. uh so if let's have a look at the basic character creation guide uh, that goes from there. That will include the races and the new rule for races where you can have custom races. I'm going to put that in there. Somebody's asked for that, so we decided to we'll accomplish. That looks 49, 59. At the moment, it looks about 12 pages. Uh, by the time we fill that out with some artwork, uh, the custom races, that will go up to probably up between 24 pages, that sort of thing. The, the very thin books, uh, then we'll have one with all the specializations we'll be able to expand. We've got a lot more coming in, giving you more choices. Uh, we've mm -hmm. broke them down a bit. And so you're looking between 12 to 24 pages a book. Because mm -hmm. they've got to be in multiple of four to print anyway. So Yeah. And taking that, in, taking that into account... Um, when it comes to, I think this is as good a time as any to um, to cover to cover the cat to cover the categories when it comes to perks because that was something I kind of skimmed over. I talked about the concept of those categories, but I didn't go into much detail at the time. So I'd kind of like to go through the seven ca the seven categories and what the general feel for for each of them would be. Okay. And so the uh, oh sorry go, on, go we'll start, ahead sorry. we'll start with agitator okay so with these uh, perks currently in the core system so this is another change from the core system in the core system the perks are not in category they're just a big list of perks what are they going to do the the reason they're being categorized first is so you get the the mindset of why we're doing this mm. is they due to character creation. In the character creation, when you choose your role, you choose one of six roles, and that's agitator, defender, etc., mm -hmm. as we're going to go through. And in there, there was a list of perks, and you would choose from them in core. Now, we're going to add some more perks, and some perks will be multi-categories as well, and it will expand upon that list, and you can choose two of and it also saying in the book that you may choose to agitate perks. You can then, whenever we do expansions and we include more perks and the perks will be categorized, mm -hmm. you can take them from different books. Whereas in the core, there was only a fixed list. Here, it's been a bit more open, allowing for expansion packs, guidebooks, and campaign worlds, or uh, what we call core worlds, mm -hmm. etc. Or even adventures. I can put some more in or magazines and things like that. So agitators are, as the word says, they agitate people. So they are the part of the party that are a crowd controller. They put hindrances on the enemy. 
remove positives from the enemy as well. So if they're boosts and got bonus dice, they can use agitation to bring that down, remove them, put more ad- hindrances on them, therefore giving their allies or the agitator himself extra dice in their dice pool. Mm-hmm. So next next would be defender, and one's mind might easily shift to the concept of tanks, but I get the feeling that 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 there's mul- that you have multiple ways on how someone could could fulfill the idea of a tank. Absolutely, it's not all. I've got lots of hit points with a defender. They do have. Uh, the option to get lots of hit points and their physique, but they can be, I mean, that is a, a physique or a hit point tank. Whereas a, there's the other type of defender, which is you can't hit me at all. So there could be a dodge or a defense defender, mm-hmm. which because with their 10 stats, you've got physique and defense. So to hit someone, you have to beat their defense role. So you can have like, depending if they've got shields, they're going to block or parry or, or dodge. And they could go down that route. Hmm. So all of their abilities would go into boosting their defense. Whereas, uh, but also in there, they could have perks, etc., that would boost mm-hmm. physique, give them more hit points, make them ignore wound penalties, that sort of thing. And I can I can certainly get behind that. That um, next would be enhancer. The enhancer is total opposite to the agitator, where the agitator is a crowd controller. The enhancer is your party buffer, and they will give you boost dice. So, uh, not boost dice, bonus dice. So they boost you with bonus dice, and it got a natural ability. If you're within close range of an enhancer, you'll get a natural bonus dice anyway. But they have extra things where they can inspire you. They, etc they can choose a particular member in the party give them extra dice partial on their social dice that sort of thing so Mm -hmm. they keep the party going it's not all about healing a lot of uh, the enhancers i've seen in games uh i would say 80 percent go down the healing route and Mm -hmm. but they're they're not all you get the inspiring champion you know that that sort of thing character that inspires them by example Mm mm-hmm now, next would be ranged, and I'd say this is going to be one of the more straightforward ones. Absolutely. Ranged and scrap are very straightforward. These are the damage dealing uh, roles or classes, if you if you know you don't know what a role is. Mm-hmm. But they're, a ranged character is a missile. They, they like to fight at ranged. So you're the artillery of the group, even to be fantasy, sci-fi or anything, they're going to attack from afar. A lot of ranged characters are rolling D12s because they are, become a one-trick pony and bung all their things into their ranged. So they their job is to pick off the enemy, while everybody else is making the enemy easier to pick off and protect that ranged guy. The ranged is taking them out because it's about party unity. Whereas on the flip side, the scrapper gets up close and personal. Again, it's all about combat getting into physical, whereas ranged is about agility and perception, being at ranged, and the scrapper is getting in their faces, dealing damage in melee. Mm-hmm. Now, that brings me to the tactician. Tactician, not always a party leader, generally does. The tacticians are what keeps the party going. There's a mechanic in the game called Momentum. Momentum allows you to re-roll dice, give yourself boost dice, give your allies boost bonus dice, remove hindrance dice temporarily, give yourself extra hit points, like a, a quick second win boost of health, delirium, that sort of thing, mm-hmm. recover extra energy. So Momentum is only ever got whenever you beat a target roll by 10 or more. So if you beat it by 20, you get two points of a Momentum. And now you're restricted on how much momentum you can carry from scene to scene. Mm -hmm. But tacticians, their job is they keep the party moving. They give them momentum and they also give boosts to initiative. So they give bonus dice to anybody who can hear or see them Mm -hmm. to their initiative roles, which is MR. So, um, yeah. And last is general which i'm guessing would be just the catch-all for ones for the 
for all the advantages that don't fit any any other um, category. Absolutely, it's a a category which says you know most of the posts are going to fit a category, but there's going to be a post that just might not fit and becomes a general one like Weaver. It, you need to have Weaver active to use any sort of power specialization group, which gives you a massive list, kind of like a spell list. Mm -hmm. And then you tap into that using Weaver, whereas uh, a singular power power or spell, prayer, magic item, whatever it is, you don't need to have Weaver for. But yeah. so but that, that's a bit deeper into the system. So that would fall into the general because it's not an agitator, it's not a defender. Yeah. It, it, it's got its own purpose. And in the character generation... I mean, we've still got six months to look over all the rules. And as we're going through them, you know, my book's covered in highlights um, to make some final decisions. Mm -hmm. there, there could be, um, in the character generation, I, I, at the moment it says like two agitator. I might go one agitator and one any, you know, so you can choose it from any, I don't know yet, or one agitator or one general, something like that. Mm -hmm. We will see. Because if you're an agitator, once you get past uh, your role choices, there is a new choice of upgrade because we don't use the character development points for character creation anymore. That's, mm -hmm. due, that's used through character development through the game. Now, character creation is so quick. It's really, really quick. It's done in 15 minutes flat if, you, if you're quick at making decisions and you've got your concept in mind. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you get to a place where you can... So you go through your role, and it gives you all your, your choices based on that role. And then there's an area where you can boost all your stats to a certain amount, all your specializations to a certain amount. And then there's a bonus selection, which you kind of could do anything with. You know, there's a large list which you get to choose from. And in there is you can choose a perk or upgrade an existing perk. But that choice can be any perk from any of these lists. So there's nothing stopping an enhancer having one of the agitator perks. Mm -hmm. So now when it comes to character creation, you mentioned dropping your the hybrid system you had before for a step-by-step -step approach. Um, I'd like you to go into the difference between the two and why you dropped the former for the latter. Okay, so we were creating a um, virtual tabletop interface for Foundry VTT mm -hmm. for um, playtesting our games online for everybody across the world. And when we were creating it, the, the programmer put in the first part, because it's a hybrid, as you know, as you get, you, you um, choose your race, you choose your role. And in that area, that pretty much defines all your specializations and perks and the, your base stats. Mm -hmm. And then you had 150 character development points to spend. And this would take hours because uh, my players like going to get knit right into it. And the problem happened was when the characters would die, you spend all that time and it is a dangerous combat system and we'd have a character die. So before we carried on, uh, they would want me to sit there and talk over their character as you do. And I like to hear about their thought process, offer suggestions as a games master. And it just kind of interrupted the flow. Whereas having a step-by-step, -step, the choices are expanded because the step process of the hybrid system in core, the choices were small. So you would choose between two specializations or three stats, that sort of thing. Now you're getting a lot more. It'll be, I, I think there's like 20 specializations you get to choose for, depending on the stats that are in the in the role. Mm -hmm. And it, so therefore it's different between each role, keeping it interesting. And then when you finished all your role choices, mm -hmm. the next step is you get to increase five stats or you get five increases across your stats. So you can go, oh, I'm going to put three in this one, two in this one, but nothing can go over D12. Mm -hmm. And then you go into specializations and you get five increases. You could have five new specializations, put five levels into one, uh, provided it doesn't go over D12. Mm -hmm. Anything can go over D12 once the game starts by spending character development points. But yeah. we find that the character creation now is... 15 minutes 
you know, mm-hmm. and the time comes that is taken up is choosing gear and spending your money. So people can make their characters get into the game and they cause character development points come quick and rapid in the game. They're finding it then, ah, we can now sort of mold our character to the story easier as well. Mm-hmm. Now, with that, in, with that in mind, I'm guessing that even with, even with that, there's still an option for those who, um, death, who the, for those who do want to go freeform with a at your own risk tag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what do you mean by the the by that? Um, what I mean, I now when the at your own risk tag, I put I put in as a asterisk, but more of if you more of um even games that have that have some sort of structured setup for character creation sometimes have an option if you absolutely want to go freeform um but but war- but warning you in advance this is going to be a more involved process um that's ki- that's kind of what i'm leaning towards a good example of this would be um, yes, when soon. when shadowrun introduced the priority system in 5th edition they still provided the option for those who just want to start with a bunch of karma and then go and then go at it however they like but there's the warning in advance that um, you might result in some very interesting ca- um, character spreads. Yeah, you know? the uh, that's interesting. That's an interesting idea because we had actually removed the hybrid part of it, so there is no character development points in the character creation, mm-hmm. and. There's nothing stopping anybody who had core going. Well, we like the core character creation because they they, they perfectly integrate. The only problem is your choices are a lot less. The uh, adding it in, I don't know. We're very tight for space in the books, so I think I'm going to because our new vision is to keep it out. Mm-hmm. But once the game starts, there are no more choices. It is totally freeform. So you you know what you develop, you can develop any of your stats, get any perk, any specialization, and go from there. But we have no intention of having that alternate character creation because all all the NPCs are going to be developed this way as well. All right, I can I can understand that. Yeah, but if they do use a hybrid system, um, there is really the characters will not turn out much different. Mm-hmm. Not at all, except for I think in core, there's no restriction of going over D12. Yeah. So you know that that's the only difference. Yet, if you did go over D12, you wouldn't have the character development points to do anything else. Mm. So it's kind of you get more uh, for your buck by using the step by step process than you do with the character development points. And because we've designed it, when we when I suggested this to the members, they because they love the character development points, they said, well, we don't want to lose the choices that we had and the diversity of characters we can do. Mm-hmm. So once you finish the step-by-step, which is the same as core, but with more choices, I, the, the next steps that follow are open and free-flowing. So there is no restrictions to what how you spend those levels. It's just that they're more focused. So you're getting five levels of stats, five specializations whereas before you might only put up two stats and maybe get seven specializations Mm -hmm. but then after that there is a sort of bonus selection which is you could either choose another stat to go up or another specialization or no another perk that sort of thing Mm -hmm. now with with that in with that in mind i'm getting i'm Whenever it comes to games that that do a, that do a freeform design, there's always the question of of um, analysis paralysis, and I'm curious if you if there if there's some asides or some gu- or some guidance that you'd be putting in character creation section for Pegasus to ha- to help mitigate that. I.e., if somebody wants to play to an archetype, these would be good or good or bad ideas, kind of thing. I hadn't thought of that. That's a really good idea, which I'm going to make a note of. But yes, um, 
we found uh, when people are making up the characters before, even with the free form, um, side from the, which is different to the way it goes now, that they didn't really have trouble because you ha you have to have your character concept first when, before you're going on to the next steps. It helps you get through. But I think I'm going to go into a bit more detail on maybe how to, if you want to be more min-maxi uh, or you want to be spread, what the consequences are of min-maxing. Because you've got the 10 stats and they're all used in combat in some way, that mm -hmm. if you drop to a D4 in something, you're going to suffer. But if I think it's important, like you said, players understand of the footfalls before they go down that, else they become disheartened, don't they? Mm -hmm. And we don't want that. So I like that idea, and I'm going to put that in. Yeah. Uh, and it's that's not this that's not to say do do some sort of handhold when it comes to when it comes to certain when it comes to certain archetypes. But a, a trap that I've seen a lot of universal style games. Pull and even some games that aren't universal but just have a point-based setup is they'll prov they'll provide the re they'll provide the readouts for for certain archetypes, but not necessarily provide um the, provide the way to get there. And I think the way to get there is important because once somebody's a little more comfortable, they'll they'll um naturally want to tweak it. Yeah. Oh. I know I pick on I pick on Shadowrun a lot when it comes to this kind of thing, but that's only that's only because it's an easy target for it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Shadowrun. <laughs> I I do too, but the yeah. but you ha sometimes you have to hurt the ones you love. <laughs> yes. Now I can I I can inf there's a couple of things that I think I can infer. One of them is, you're st even with this revamp, you're still maintaining the color coding that you had in the first book. Absolutely. We're going to add a few more icons and things like that mm -hmm. as well to yes. help with people who have got um, color blindness and stuff. So, mm -hmm. and just ha just having that al allows it to get the get the point across fairly qu fairly quickly. Um, and incidentally, when it came to that suggestion, I'm not. I know that the pre-gen pack was unlo was unlocked recently. I'm not saying to dem demonstrate the math with e with each of those, but just something to consider for an example. Oh, uh, now taking that taking that into account, I did I did notice that the that the rule set, the core rules is still is still largely the same is are there in if somebody's somebody who's jumping from core to pegasus are there are there any significant things that they that they should keep an eye out for with this new setup no because the setup's going to complement the core, uh, the core so all the color coding of using core are coming straight across mm -hmm. um, because we don't want people getting confused so they'll know, oh, I need to go to purple for the um, character creation, you know. Blue's my, my combat, red for the basic rules, that sort of thing. And, you know, orange for the uh, GM stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, to shift gears a bit, I'd like to talk about the AAE guide. Um, now, as I... One thing, one thing that I'm curious about is what... Is what would separate this from the way a the way a bestiary or monster manual or or the like is typically written? Because this is not a monster manual. Well, well, there's the there's the obvious part, but <laughs> although it does have um, a a uh, section in the back of encounters, like a monster manual in the back, in there, which is. Different from the others because they're just the goon based or sidekick based characters in there to use straight out of the book mm -hmm. to save Games Master's time. So we've just added like 30 new encounters in there for the Games Master. But the primary, and this is what the Kickstarter is about it's all about the AAE guide. The Pegasus engine is just an add on, it's a double whammy, it's an extra bonus. But it's all about this guide here. Mm hmm. 
And what it's about, it allows your characters to have allies, personal allies in the group. Psychics, they're called. Or pets. Or, you know, that pet robot and the pet could be, I don't know, uh, a cat or something like that. Or um, your sidekick, it could be a loved one or, you know, your dynamic duo, you know, Batman and Robin. It can be a little bit super powered if you want. Mm. And that's what this is bringing in. And not just so you've got some random NPC. This is not an, a random NPC who's joining the group. He's loyal. He's, he's going to follow you everywhere or she's going to follow you everywhere. This sidekick is going to be developed by you mm. and your character as part of your character development process. So during downtime, you get a choice. Do I develop my character or cause you might be saving character development points for that very expensive stat. And so everybody's having a downtime and you're twiddling your thumbs and you might have a sidekick and you go, I know I'll train my sidekick. And therefore, you're, you develop your psychic as a secondary character. They're a lot weaker, and they've, they're prone to get you in more trouble. That's what psychics are all about. You have to go and rescue your psychic a lot. And uh, we're playing a Call of Cthulhu game using the Pegasus engine at the moment. And one of the characters is testing the AAE, guiding it with their psychic. And unfortunately, the psychic's been a, a victim of one of the events and is about to snuff it so mm -hmm. they're, they're easily come easily go but in the uh, character creation process in the bonus area you can decide to have a psychic instead of a stat mm -hmm. increase and they are great because psychics will have a role as well and they give you a special ability so for example if you've got an enhancer psychic you've always got an extra boost with them etc like that mm -hmm. so they're always there to give you extra dice or help you out They've got some special abilities. All, all right, I can I I can get behind that. Now, when it come, I'm guessing that within I'm guessing that within the AAE guide, you you're you're also going to be putting advice on how to build an encounter. Yes, I've got an adventure in there, mm -hmm. and I've I've had this question a lot, uh, especially by my communities. They'll come to me, well, Martin, how do I actually build adventures like you run? And I said, right, I well, I just do it. And so I sat down and I thought, what do I do? And it was really difficult because when you do something naturally, you don't actually think it through. How do I do it? So I I decided to draw it all out and see how this came together. So what I've done is I drew, drew out a brand new adventure so I could record my thought process. Mm -hmm. And as I was putting the adventure into the AAE guide, so it's got a complete adventure in there as well. So it's, you know, but it's broken down as a step-by-step -step guide how I thought about it, why I've put this encounter in, uh, you know, what, what you could do to advance this adventure onwards. So I've broke it, broke it down a bit for uh, new games masters experienced games masters would probably know all of this anyway but uh, new games masters um might not realize how, how to create their own adventures this is going to be a great guide for that mm -hmm. it, it just breaks it down simply and go this is it don't overthink things and this is how i do it yeah now taking that taking that into taking that into account um, I know that you. I know you do a healthy amount of of games at, in your in your particular area. But what I'm curious about is if is if you plan if you plan on doing a full on a full on um build guide video for not not just to not just going through the step by step of character creation, but actually putting it in, putting it into practice by by putting out a video building a character. It's already there. If you go through the Kickstarter, I think there is a couple of videos right at the bottom of the story. If not, there is a link I got in one of my channels as well. And so on my uh, YouTube, I have uploaded a Pegasus Engine character creation. There's a video of me creating a character. Mm -hmm. and the thought I'm doing as well, get, trying to get the concept, and a favorite character of mine. I've got a video for performing tasks, examples of combat as well, and an, a, a quick look at the, ov 
a view of powers, but which I'll update once all the power rules have mm-hmm. completely been finalised. So, but I will do a step for every part of the book. I intend to create these videos showing you how to use it as well. Mm-hmm. So, with that in with that in mind. And I know I, I know I say that a bit because it because old habits die hard. <laughs> uh, what are you shooting for as far as the as far as the page count for the for the Pegasus engine and for the AAE guide? Okay, the Pegasus engine. We're looking at there's roughly the same sort of total pages between all the books as the core book. Which is sits around 184, so we're looking around 200 pages. Don't want to go over that; it just becomes a bit too big. Uh, the whole idea of Pegasus Engine is to get pl- games running quickly. Hmm. That's the idea. Uh, the AA guide is we're looking around 100 pages. I think our vehicle and mounts guide hit a stretch goal that pushed it forward to 124, mm-hmm. but I tend to go over because I can't help but add loads of artwork in. But I'm looking at 200, and because we're printing it ourselves, it, mm-hmm. you know, if I go over four four odd pages, so be it. Mm-hmm. But I'm not. I would not go sh- shy. So 184 is what it sits at at the moment. So mm-hmm. that's our target. But I kind of, in my heart, know that I'm probably going to be reaching towards the 200. Well, depending, the- you know, divisible by four. In the in lieu of not wanting to jinx the matter. <laughs> just because, just because, at when you have this many moving parts, that's a that's a recipe for just about it, just about anything to go to go terribly wrong. Um. Now, I'd like to pivot a bit when it comes to when it comes to genre emulation and how and how this kind of thing is handled because one particular is, one particular issue that can happen is when you have when you have an archetype that has that taps into some sort of supernatural ability, whether whether they're all in on it or a gish, and that it, and that is how to how to handle it on a power system. Um, this is a roundabout way of me of me covering the whole issue that magic has in in say supers and universals games, where yeah. it's basically used as a glorified Joker card. Um, how would how would somebody who wanted to do a wanted wanted to do a magic system for a, for a fantasy campaign with Pegasus handle that? Okay, that's it's easy enough. Where I have run this in all genres, mm-hmm. we're at the currently we've got superhero game going, we've got a fantasy game going, and we've got a sci-fi game going. So we've got a sci-fi, we've got a couple of psychers in there that are using psionics. In our superhero game, of course, they've all got powers. They're all superhero based. And then in our fantasy game, we have got a couple of magic. We've got one that's a magic user, another one that is a priest. So we've got some, you know, clerical style spells going on. The power system is 100% universal. It can be a magical ability. It can be a superpower, a spell, a prayer magic item, a uh, wondrous device, ancient lost technological item, a blood ability, anything you can think of. Because that is all narration. Mm-hmm. They all use exactly the same rules. It's just what is the narration. So you've got the base. When you're buying your powers now, you've got uh, power purchase points. So depending on the game that you're running... The GM might say, right, there are zero per power purchase points because um, if you are playing a fantasy game, for example, so we're answering your question, mm-hmm. you are more likely to go to buy spell groups. So you, in your purchases of specializations, you might buy Theomancy, which gives you access to fire magic. Mm-hmm. And in the Theomancy, there is a list of powers that it will allow you to access once you activate your weave a perk and then that ticks down for three turns and you activate it again and you can then get automatic activation outside of a combat t- turn for just you know the uh role-playing mm. situations but during the combat 
you would activate this perk for adrenaline and you then while that's active can use your powers and you're limited to the amount of time that they're, they're active and things like that so that is how you would tackle it for spell groups because you haven't got large amounts of power points to go buying individual powers so you would have 10 powers all in this one specialization but the downside is, is you've got to activate your perk and then you've got to spend energy boosting it from scratch now the difference is is also during your character creation you may use your bonus to buy five purchase power points so you could get that specialist spell you might have you know some sort of energy shield or um, armor or or magic missiles, you know, arcane blast, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And you might buy that as a separate power, so you don't need to use your weaver for it. But therefore, its starting ability is going to be a lot tougher. Mm -hmm. So you've got this powerful spell that you're really good at, or a couple of spells that you're really good at. So you can customize it that way. Or you might have several spell lists or these power groups specializations so and in, in the supers game you would wouldn't really access them because unless you're a a, uh, a a spell casting super then you might pick up a few specializations and in the purchase points you might get some token spells that you're really good at but leave all your energy for casting amongst them all mm -hmm. so you know it can be anything you want because it's all about narration. Yeah. Because if you've got a fire blast as, say you've got uh, pyromancy as your wizard mm -hmm. and you want to use fire blast because I'm going to break down that the energy attack into fire attacks, ice attacks. Mm -hmm. So a bit more, uh, so the power book's going to be a bit bigger. So you can, you do a fire blast. You start at D4, and then you have to put more energy in. Say you want to do a D10, big ball, and make it an area effect, so it's more like fire ball. Mm -hmm. you're, you're ending up like 10 energy points to do this. Whereas a superhero might spend their purchase points to get this D10 fire blast and then be spending two or three energy mm -hmm. because they've purchased it beforehand. That's that's the difference between them. Which I can, I can certainly get behind that. Now... What are you shooting for as far as a release window? Not a date, but a ballpark. We are hoping for Phil, this Kickstarter, both books by December. We've wrote, I mean, uh, the Pegasus engine is practically done. There's a few rules I just want to make sure I don't want to change. So we're really hammering this a specific role. Uh, the AA guide, we, we've already wrote the book ready for the call. So what that's waiting for is finalization in Pegasus. I and mean, then I go for it and we quickly um, change the the rules around. I'd actually started to lay it out into the old core style. And therefore, all we have to do is just change the backgrounds and re-blow all the layout for that. So that's been wrote. It just needs loads of artwork, which is now I've got six months to do the artwork. Um, I'm not going to cheat in the Pegasus engine either. I will be lifting all the art from the core, but I want to kind of put more in and update what I've got there with the new styles of art that we're using. That ma that certainly makes sense. And I will be keeping a close eye, as I always do, on, on how it develops. But with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and braving the hell of time zones to come all the way up to my temple and enjoy the <laughs> madness at play here. And no, thank you for having me. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> Drinking's always good. <laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay f
fucking frosty, everybody.